Hey guys, this is Chris Edwards for iPokerVIP.com and this is the third video of the series Heads Up 101 and today I'll be uh, one tabling against a fishy opponent at uh, 400NL on stars. Um, this opponent, uh, he doesn't really have that much an idea of Heads Up. Um, I think he sort of has a clue on how to play poker but um, sort of seems like a uh, you know, a, a, a little bit new to heads up. Um, he's not really utilizing position that much, um, as you can see from his stats there. He's almost playing the same amount out of position as in position. And he's probably closest to a lag. He's uh, He plays a lot of pots, and he's really aggressive in a lot of them. Uh, and in 3-bet pots, he tends to go wild as well. Um, another read I have on my opponent is um, whenever the the river is checked to him, he has to bet. Uh, not sure why, he just feels like he, he has to. So throughout this video, I'll be looking to exploit that as much as I can and um, adjust accordingly to his uh, aggressive style to show a profit at the end of the video, hopefully. Alright guys, so you guys should be taking note on how I'm adjusting and playing optimally in every situation or trying to at least okay so let's get into the video first of all king 10 really standard stuff I'm sure you guys would have done the exact same C bet there pretty standard but he folds um, ace queen suited easy 3 bet against the fish um, I'll be 3 betting probably ace 10 um, and this guy in particular at, at this point in the match he wasn't folding to that many 3 bets so I'd probably be 3 betting maybe even ace 9 suited and king jack off suit and uh, marginal marginal 3 betting hands like that okay so the flop comes 10 8 2 and I've got uh, 2 over cards, a backdoor flush draw and a backdoor straight draw so this isn't the worst flop for us so I'm going to be C betting here because a lot of turns can improve our range and um, his his calling range is so wide that we'll get so many folds which we did there um, another thing to notice is his check raise percentage is 4 which I'll get back to in a minute um, I check here because he uh, w once he bets this uh, flop I don't see many aces in his limping range so I think he, his ranges are full of bluffs here and I'm not going to raise this flop because I want him to just c continue bluffing and then I river the third nuts or basically the nuts because he never hardly ever has aces or kings here and so I check it to him to try to get something out of him but he checks it straight back and it didn't work out but the the uh, thought was right there as he showed uh, 410 for 10 high so nothing at all there um, and another read on this guy is that uh, once he loses a pot he tends to uh, three bet the hand after so I probably should be looking to you know limp or or min raise the uh, next hand after he loses a pot but um, I think at this time I didn't really take note of that I'm gonna fold the ace two there, just not strong enough to defend. Uh, pocket three is here. He four x's a button, which means he could be tilting a little bit. Um, I flop a set here. Um, you could go for the check raise, I guess, but um, his his range here is, you know, it's so weighted towards ace highs and um, you know po uh, pairs of twos, pairs of threes, or like or just marginal hands like pocket queens or pocket jacks. So I think I can get a lot of value out of betting here, and if I check raise, I think I'm going to just get him to fold. He doesn't have a very nutted range here, and I can also get calls out of you know fives and a four, and um, yeah, hands like that, ace highs as well. And the gut sh shot straight George does does get there, and um, the, I think the best play here is to check call because um, he's betting so many rivers and. Uh, I, I'd be in a tough spot if I got raised after a value bet so check calls easily the best here against this opponent and luckily he does bet and right there you see he has a pair of fives which is, um, I'll pause the video, it's really weird because uh, he had he had third pair and he sort of value bet it like it was 
you know, pocket queens or something marginal. So we'll just we'll keep that in mind while we're playing. That he does take a lot of weird lines like that. I'm not really sure if he knows whether he's if he's doing that for value or if he's bluffing. Um, I'm not too sure if he really knows himself. Um, just maybe one of those players that um, just just bets for the sake of it, I guess, with no real no real thought behind it. <clears throat> Six seven suited, easy open. And here I decided to check back the flop because I think if I bet it, um, I'm I'm only really repping an ace, and and I think he he'll raise me off a lot of these. Um, well, not raise me off a lot of them, but just just think my my range is um really full of air and be tempted to fight back with a float or something like that. So I think if I check back here, I get a lot more credit. I can sort of rep a lot more things, which I do. And then I spike the six on the turn, which is almost always good anyway. So I go ahead and bet that for value of any draw or anything he decides to call with. Um, and I was saying before, uh, his check raise is only 4% there, as you can see, which is really low. Um, an average check raise percent would be around uh, 12 to 15 so I'm going to be sea betting as much as I can because this means basically I'm going to be seeing free rivers almost every time I sea bet the flop because he'll just be calling or folding and if he calls I can just check back the the turn and um, and see a free river uh, here he three bets and because he's three betting 22 percent um, ace nine isn't isn't strong enough to get in pre flop but it's definitely strong enough to defend against his three betting range so I'm calling that all the time there. And a flop top parent will really draw a heavy board, so I'm betting to protect here. And if he check raised there, I would uh if we were a lot more shallow, I'd be getting stacks in. But because we're deep, I wouldn't be getting stacks in here. Um here I decide to check back and hopefully check down the winning hand. Um now that the diamond comes I'd be folding to any bet there. But um yeah, just wanted to get to showdown there with uh, what was second pair on the turn. Well, no kicker. I could bet for value there as well, but yeah. Either way. It's close. <clears throat> um, Queen 7 here. Pretty standard opening. And a standard C bet. Uh, that's a pretty draw heavy board there. Um, once he Once he calls his flop here. I think he can have a fair few sixes in his range. He also can have a lot of uh, draws, like I said, um, flush draw, seven eight, um, three four suited maybe, you know, um, seven four. For a lot of draws there and a lot of gutters as well. So I'm definitely betting betting for value anyway with top pair. And once he goes ahead and bets here, pretty small. Um, I've seen him bet uh, around really close to pot for with stronger hands so um, here I think he either has a busted draw or a queen like um, queen jack or queen 10 maybe queen 9 so I'm going to be raising here for value uh, every time and if I get shoved on or, f uh, or 3 bet um, I will be folding but I think a raise here is good because fish don't like to fold top pair at, at all as you should know and um, I think I'll get looked up here a fair bit because of all the draws that missed, if he's thinking about that anyway. Um, yeah, he should look me up there with the Queen a fair bit, and it's definitely worth the raise. Um, another thing to take note of is this the stat there. It says CBT. Um, he's is only 27%, so he's not, he's not barreling many turns. That means continuation, bet the turn. So we could probably get to showdown uh, really easy. So that means maybe playing the the worst ace highs is, is better against this guy because we can get to showdown so often. Um, here, I bet the sevens here because I, when he checks back, I think he has a lot of ace highs and he loves, has a lot of fours, maybe a weak five and a lot of twos there in his range and sevens is just almost always good there. So I'm betting that for value. The only hand with a king there that he's checking back really is probably king queen or ace king, which is just such a small part of his range. 
And um, one thing you guys should know is um, I do make mistakes in this video. I think I make about three or four. Um, uh, the the one thing you should never be doing against an opponent like this is bluffing. Just wait to trap him, and if, I know it can. It's just a test of your patience, but you need to just really be patient and um, just wait for the right spots. Uh, here, uh, ace high, ace four is a defend because he min raised. That's an adjustment you guys should be making. If they are min raising, you need to uh, widen up your defending range a lot more. Because uh, because of the pot odds you're being given pre-flop, so I'll be calling um, pro if he's min raising, I'll probably be calling about 50% of hands. Um, chuck that into poker stove if you guys want to want an illustration of of what hands that is. Here, ten nine suited is a standard defend. Even if it wasn't suited, I'd be defending it, and a flop top pair and a gut shot. So, and um, I'm pretty stoked with that flop. That's a great flop for me. I wouldn't be check raising though because I don't think I can get value from much worse. Um, but now that I spiked the, the straight on the turn, um, I don't mind checking here. Um, but betting is also good as well. I think against the fish, you can get calls from the weirdest stuff here. He can call you with a five, just, just for the, even though the nine won't even matter if it hits him, but for the four, for the straight, he'll call you because he's a fish. Um, he'll call you with Queen Jack or any Jack just to hit a nine, and you can get calls from um, a lot of a lot of two pair hands that he checked back the flop on, like six eight or seven eight, and um, yeah, a lot of hands like that. So I'll be betting this for value, but I don't mind a check here either to induce a bluff on the river. But like I said earlier, at this point I wasn't too aware that he he um, felt it necessary to bet every river. So, um, had I known that read, I probably would have checked there and checked the river as well. Here, I flop bottom pair with a back shot, uh, back door flush draw. So, I'm going to be betting this flop for value um, because he can have so many hands like Queen Jack, 7-8 uh, that I'm ahead of that um, have a lot of equity against me that'll call a, um, that'll call a bet here. And I can uh, snap him off before the draws brick off on the river. And you see me there with the mouse. I was circling uh, this this percentage here, the check raise of four percent, and that's another reason why I'm betting that flop, because uh, I can see a river for really cheap there every time because he's just not check raising enough. <clears throat> and um, also in this video. Uh, we should be, you guys should be looking at uh, towards the end, uh, middle towards the end. He does uh, get a little bit tilted. So we spoke about last week. Uh, you have to adjust within a session, which I'll get back to in a second. Here I flop uh, nothing. I've just got the jack high, so I'll be c betting this flop every time, just to try to take it down here because this flop can't really hit his range that much. Um, here now that I spike the jack and he called the. the I think his calling range here is it's a pretty draw heavy board he can have ace 4, ace 5 type of hand he can have a flush draw he can have 4, 5 um, gut shot straight draws, he can have a 3 a 2 and any pair from 4's through to you know pocket 9's that didn't 3 bet pre-flop so once I spike this jack I think my hand is almost always good and I'm going to check it back to try to get it to showdown now that the the two uh, the two comes off, he obviously he can have a two like Ace Two suited, but it's not likely, and all the draws miss. So I think calling here is massively profitable. I'm good a huge percentage of the time here, and especially because he bets so many rivers. But this time he does have top two pair. But um, like I always say, and I was saying last week and the week before. Don't be results orient oriented. That's a good call there, and is definitely profitable in the long run. <coughs> um, yeah, but what I was saying about the um, the in-game adjustments towards the end, uh, you'll notice that he does start to tilt, and I will really tighten up my range even more so for an in-game adjustment. Um, as you can see, I've I've already made the the adjustments to to the to the player type. Now I need to adjust to uh, the game flow as well. 
here I flop uh, a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw and an overcard so I'll be C betting this because he's not check raising enough and I should get some folds here which I do um, yeah and like I said I've adjusted to the player type um, you can see my small blind my opening range there is only 76% so I've really tightened up uh, usually I'll be playing 90% to 100% so I've tightened up there because he's 3-betting so much and he's defending so much and I want my range to be um, pretty strong against his and um, I'm defending 32% uh, I think that's a little bit high there because of the fact that he is min-raising some buttons like this one now um, which makes Queen 4 suited a definite defend and now that I turn the 4 I think I'm almost always good here and I'm betting that for value against all the draws that have just come up on the on the turn there hopefully you could get a call out of a lot of things there so that's a definite bet um, yeah so that's why my uh, defending range is is around standard um, usually because he's only opening a small amount of hands I would be um, I'll just pause it there. I would be, uh, I'd be defending less to try to be ahead of his range out of position, but because he's min raising, um, I can defend hands like this one here, nine three suited, and I'll just be checking this one down to showdown. Hopefully, um, bring home the pot there, which I do. And he had eight seven suited, which I should be noting. Um, that he just he just gave up on the pot there. Um, here, King Jack suited, got a backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw, and an overcard. Can never be bad to see back there, especially because he's check raising only four percent. And I've got a few notes here on him. Um, he takes really weird lines, like we saw with that that five ten. Um, he bet it like it was like it was a really strong hand. Um, and he likes to slow play in three bet pots uh, when he's in position um, he caught me bluffing uh, for an entire stack when I um, I'll just be folding the king high there pretty standard by the way um, when I I barreled on the river earlier in the session uh, which was a king which was an overcard to the board and I had three bet preflop so I thought I could represent it pretty well um, and he snapped me off with the nuts on the river which he had slow played from the flop so I just took that one down there you guys should be taking notes like that as well um, also the green there that means he's a fish um, my color coding is green is a fish red is a good reg and blue is a bad reg just get um, you should get your own sort of note taking system down and um, color coordinate the, the different types of opponents and the last note there was likes to over bet when my range looks capped um, I never I never looked him up so I, I'm assuming this is what he does but he could have just had the hand uh, all the time because I know fish fish don't really like to over bet as bluffs as often as a good reg will but um, yeah so I'll, I'll maybe be looking to check check back my top pair of hands and just just trap him down on the river like this one for example uh, as you can see I check it back and here now that the queen falls I think there's a fair few queens in his checking back range so I'll be betting the river and I could check there as well because he always bets the rivers but at this point I didn't really know and he had pocket sixes there and like you, like I told you before um, after he loses a big pot he he likes to three bet the next hand so I probably should have min raised that or limped on the button there but it wasn't too clear to me at the time um, flop it flop the nut flush draw here so pretty easy uh, pretty easy C bet there pretty standard Check 10 suited. I think about 3 betting it, but remember what I told you guys um, about the the hands like Jack 10. Um, you don't want to be 3 betting these hands because uh, you, you're dominated pretty much all the time when you're getting called. The only hand you'll be dominating when you're getting called here is like a 10 9 suited type hand. 
But um, yeah, most most of the time you'll be getting called by hands like King Jack and Ace Ten and King Ten. They just have you dominated. So avoid three betting these types of strong to medium mid strength hands. And now that the flop comes top pair and and a gut shot straight draw, I'm going to be check raising this. I wouldn't usually do this against a you know a good opponent, but I feel here I can get so many calls from a nine from a 7, um, from an, any 8, any 10, because fish love to chase gut shot straight draws. And I can get calls from like Queen 10 hands, um, even things like King Queen will call. So I think it's pretty good to, to check raise here, and I do get the call. And now I still think my I'm way ahead of his range here, so I'm going to be betting this turn for value again. But he ends up folding, so I think he might have had like a a 7 or a 9 there probably because they do tend to get stubborn with a gut shot and would probably call one more straight there King Jack standard opening uh, get the fold if he min raids there I think I'd still be defending a hand like t uh, 9 do suited uh, because you you know you can flop those those uh those draws like I said the flush draws and you can put uh, a lot of pressure on your opponent and that's where the plus EV comes from. I told you that uh, told you guys that last week. That you should be looking to defend suited hands a lot more than non suited. You can see there I went to uh, open five queen suited, but I don't think against this opponent uh, hands like that are, are profitable um, unless they're suited of course. Um, hands like five queen and uh, you know king deuce off. Uh, I won't be opening here. I flop two pair, and um, it's such it's such a draw heavy board that I have to be betting this turn because I'll get calls from so much. Um, when he checks back the flop, I think he has a lot of jacks in his range, a lot of tens, maybe a weak queen. I don't think he has a flush draw in his range very much. Um, but now that the 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 turn brings another flush draw. He may have spades, but I think he'd raise those. So now that he calls the uh, the f the turn bet, um, I think I don't know. He just has a lot of jacks in his range and a lot of tens, and just some really weird stuff because you know he likes to take those weird lines. And I don't see him having a nine very often. So I'm going to check here with the intention of snapping off any bet. Uh, he can have a backdoor flush draw, but um, like I said, he just takes the weirdest lines that check calling here is definitely the most profitable player. You can see I think about betting for value, but if I get raised, I'd be in a tough spot. And he pots the the river, and I'm not even thinking about it because I already had my... Oh no, I, sorry, I do tank for a while, but I think I already had my mind made up that I was never ever folding this hand. But I think because he does take weird lines, it plays on my mind a little bit that he can have a 9. And as you see there, he does have a king, which is really weird because you tend to see... Um, he, uh, most people see bet that flop with a king to try to get folds. Um, here, because I think he's tilted, I can get a lot of value out of pocket 8s, which is often borderline. So I was 3-betting that pre. And I'll be c-betting here for value out of a 7, a 5, and lower pocket pairs but we get a fold. 8-3 suited um, and like I said there uh, it's really easy to tell when he's tilted after he's lost, lost a pot or two in a row um, he will be 3 betting so I probably shouldn't have opened 8-3 suited there but it was pretty borderline and I'd expect him to 3 bet here which he does I could try to get stacks in but I think we're a little bit deep so I'm just calling here uh, it's not strong enough to get stacks in pre Maybe if we were um, 100 big blinds deep, but then still it's really borderline. Um, but I flop top pair, which is pretty much always good on this board against this guy. And he checks. I check it back because I think I've started to realise that he, he likes to bet rivers um, regardless. And the river comes a the seven of clubs and the backdoor flush draw gets there. But when he checks the flop, I think his range has, has a lot of sevens in it. Um, it's also hands like uh, kings, queens, jacks, tens, and um, uh, some nines in it as well. And this guy isn't good enough to turn a made hand into a bluff, 
So when he goes ahead and overbets this river, I think about calling here, but he's definitely not good enough to turn kings into a bluff. He's not good enough to turn queens into a bluff or a nine into a bluff. So I think he has a seven here a lot of the time or jacks full even and also because he's so uh, weird and so fishy he could have also done this with you know pocket nines uh, just or pocket sevens or pocket aces but they're a lot more unlikely as you guys can tell because there's only one combination of them because I have an ace and there's two sevens on the board but I think he just has a seven here a lot of the time like a seven eight suited type of a hand and even even though it's a really fishy line from him, um, he overbets, so the pot odds are just really bad for us. We have to be right here more than half the time, and and I just don't think we are. But even though I want to call with him, I want to call him here, I just don't think it's a profitable call. Because he's so weird with his lines that he can even have ace-king or ace-queen here, which I'm not chopping with the king or the queen players, so... I think that's a fold, even though it's pretty close. But yeah, I just think he has a 7 there too much. And the fact that he 3 bets the next hand makes me think that maybe he did have a really strong hand. And I'm 3 betting King Queen here. King Queen suited. Really strong hand, heads up. Uh, a 7 off. Um, he 3 bets here. I. I'm not sure what I do. Yeah, I would defend this. Um because, you know, he's he seems pretty tilted and once the flop comes like this and he bets this turn, uh this turn brings so many draws out uh into the field. Um he can have you know, a flush draw, he can have four five, he can have just a hand like four seven, uh eight five, eight seven, so many gut shot draws and um flush draws. So I think calling this this uh, turn to, with the intention of checking back any or calling any brick uh, on the river is definitely profitable. Excuse me. And the river does brick off, and I insta check back, and he shows ace king. So um, I know that that's prom that's a good play by him, but I don't think he knows what he's doing um, there because it does look like I have ace high a lot there, but um. I just think like that. That's just a really lo weird line for him. He doesn't know if he's bluffing or if he's doing that for value. So that just goes to show that that the notes we have down are um are pretty accurate. That he does take weird lines. So I'll be looking to to snap him off on a lot of rivers with any sort of made hand that I have. All of my bluff catches, I'll be looking to snap him off. Um, I see about the flop here, and once he once he calls, I think his his range is pretty much um, there's fours in it, there's nines in it, there's kings in it, um, and there's hands like queen jack, queen ten, with the gut shots, and um, once the the river brings the four to a flush board, and he bets twenty eight, um, I think I don't think he'd be betting a straight, so I don't think he has queen jack unless he has you know, the Queen of Hearts or the Jack of Hearts. So I really think that um, his hand here is either the Queen of Hearts or the Jack of Hearts or or just complete air sort of a thing. Um, it might be a flush, like um, a lower flush, like 7-8 suited or something like that. But um, I think here I end up looking him up because... You know, I don't think he's good enough to value better low flush, and if he had the ace high flush, I feel as though he'd bet, bet bigger. So I end up looking him up here, and he shows king ten, which, like I've said a couple of times before, is really really weird. It's either a six sick value bet, but um, for, with this guy, it's definitely not. But um. Yeah, it's just that just goes to show. I'd now, in, if I had that spot again, I'd just be snapping him off with any heart there, the two of hearts, and I'll be looking to do that um, throughout the rest of this video. I think now I realise that his his range when he bets a river is just so wide and so weird that I should be calling him with any made hand. Here I see about the flop, pretty standard, and I check back the turn, and I 
River the 8, and like I just said, I'll be snapping him off with any made hand now because his lines are so weird. And it'll be profitable, which there it was. He had pocket fours, which most people would would check back there to try to get the show down, but not this guy. Pick up Ace King the very next hand, which, always, which is always nice and 3-bet. 4-5 would usually be opening that, not against this opponent. Neither with eight deuce, king queen uh, can just can just call, but I think a three bet's a fair bit better because um, with the in-game adjustments, you you'll notice now he's he's sort of adjusting. Even though he is a fish, he he knows that I'm only three betting value hands now, so he's um he's folding to a lot of my three bets now so I should be looking to balance up my range my three betting range a fair bit more by betting those uh, hands that we went through last week with a little bit of equity like you know the king four suited and the six seven suited but here king ten flop top pair pretty good kicker I'll be saving this for value every time um, I turn top two pair and because I've just started to realize the read that he he has to bet the river um, I think Betting here is, is, I think this might be a mistake, but I think it's pretty close. Um, betting, betting here will just get so many folds, in my opinion, from just the junk that he has. But, um, yeah, I check it back here because I know that I'm, I'm guaranteed money if I check back this turn, because he's betting the river all the time. And that was my reason here for checking back. And now that Ace comes, which is the only card I'm worried about in the entire deck, because you can have Ace 6 or Ace 4, and um, I just snap it off really quickly, and I think I'm being a little bit results oriented here with my with my um, check on the turn, because he did have the 2 pair, and we probably could have got stacks in if I bet the turn, but I, I still like my check on the turn. But I think a bet there is, is just as good. But that just goes to show the adjustment I'm making against this opponent. Because I'm guaranteed money, as I said, on the river. And um, interesting to note there, he didn't check raise the, the two pair on the flop. And I get ace king again. Easy three bet. You can see that I three bet to 42 there. Uh, standard sizing is um, is 40, but the little extra two is because we're a little bit deeper, and then I can see bet larger and hopefully get stacks in by the river. That's another adjustment you need to be making once you get deeper. Eight seven suited. Um, we'll definitely be defending this. Uh, it's got such good equity against his range. And the flop comes King King Seven, which is a great flop for me. And now that he checks the he checks the flop there, um I think he has, you know, pocket pocket nines through to pocket queens, pocket eights even. Um although I've got an eight, um uh, and a lot of ace highs like ace jack, ace ten, ace queen. Um yeah, so I'm just checking this back, hopefully getting it to showdown, because he can have pocket queens and pocket jacks and pocket tens. And now that he checks a turn, I think I'm almost always good here. And he checks the river. And I bet a really small here to induce a bluff from him, because he knows that it looks like thin value, because he's fish, and I think I'll, I'll get him to spaz out a lot of the time, and it it ends up working a treat. Um, I bet really small here for thin value and to induce a bluff. Um, here, he's not good enough to to turn uh, pocket tens into a bluff here or pocket nines, which is the only only hands that um, that are credible with this. I think a good player here could could raise could would definitely be raising pocket queens. Pocket tens is a little bit marginal because I can have a jack, but his range here just completely looks like ace queen or ace ten to me. And so I think about it for a while, and it's just to ace queeny, ace tenny, ace nine sort of hand for me. And I end up calling. And it is ace high, it's the ace eight. Even smaller pocket pairs there he could have, if he's three betting those, which I think he is with a three bet of 22%. Uh, here he bets really small on the flop. 
and I call because I've got so many backdoor I've got backdoor flush draw I've got backdoor uh, straight draws and I've got an overcard so many turn cards can help my range my holding I mean and they gave me really good odds to call anyway even though it's bad playing out of position now I'm just looking to check this down and now that he overbets this one I think he's got a flush or uh, an 8 almost every time here and but he could be bluffing because like I said my range looks capped and he he might know this and that's maybe why he's overbetting here yeah, ace 10 easy defend um, I check this one back because I want him to spaz out on the river but now that so many draws come on the the turn um, I want to be betting this to protect and I can get so much value from a hand like king queen with a king of spades um, you know queen jack with a queen of spades any sort of broadway spade will be calling this um, pocket nines with a, with a spade um, I'm just getting so much value here from betting this turn that I can't uh, just check this turn ever always betting here any snap calls which makes me think he probably has like a king queen type hand but um, I'm definitely going for value on the river and he folds which I'm I definitely wanted a call there and now he raises to 32 which means he's he's tilted he's probably tilted a little bit because I've won a fair few pots in a row and I should probably not bet there and yeah he does three bets so um, I'm I'm not adjusting too well to, to um, his tilting at the moment but I think I get better towards the end 9 queen um, I was writing a note down here and I wasn't focusing that much and he pot the the flop and I wasn't in the mood to just face his barrels on the on the three to a flush board so I, I just folded there with the weak kicker and you can see me writing the note down the bottom there um, see about the king there pretty standard um, I've just sort of figured out that he he has to bet rivers when I when I check it back to him so um, yeah it's definitely in my mind now and I'll I think you'll see that I'll definitely be looking to exploit it as much as I can from here on in. Um, good board to see bet here because it's so dry that it can't really hit his range that much. But once he calls, I'm just going to be giving up on it. And he has a lot of sevens in his range. It's not a good spot to bluff. The only thing that missed is the flush draw. So I was just folding there. Six deuce are uh, not openable. And would have preferred him to bet that uh, raise there, but he didn't. Um yeah, so like I said before, I should be looking to even though he is tilted, he doesn't seem to call um I'll talk about that in a minute. Um I get the, the queen here and like I said I'd taken the note that he has to bet rivers so I checked this one all the way down to him knowing that he has to bet the river which he does and what do you know he shows complete air here I should know that he's probably gonna three bet me which he does and queen five is a definite defend not a good flop for queen five even though our queen high is probably good I have to fold there um yeah and I, you can see down there I'm I'm taking the note three bets larger with better hands I think I took that down a bit earlier because I saw him uh three bet ace king to um I saw him three bet ace king to uh I think it was 32 and he'd be three betting to to $24 which means my pot odds are just you know ridiculously good that I'll, I'll be defending almost any two there because it's almost a min raise and I can't fold I'll, prob I'll be folding anything up uh, calling anything I probably wouldn't even be folding you know anything suited the only hands I'll be folding are probably you know seven deuce and t uh, three deuce and and just a real bottom of the barrel type of hands here I get pocket aces and my mouse was stuffing up believe it or not as I went to 3-bet but um, I get a call from him which is good 
Uh, it's a really bad flop for aces. And here, I've I've got a good plan of trapping him. Um, I decide to check here because I'm not thrilled about this flop with aces. And I think if I check to him, I can just let him go wild with his with his craziness. I think checking is probably the best play here against this guy in this type of mood. And he bets really small, which is weird. He might have just one heart in his hand. And he bets really small again, which now I think his range is, you know, like a, a, a King Jack type of type of hand maybe with the or a King Ten with the, the Ten of Hearts and the Jack of Hearts maybe. And a lot of things like the eight eight nine with the nine of hearts, eight seven with the with the seven of hearts and, and things like that. And also there is so much complete air in his range as well. And this river here Whoops, I'll just pause that back. Um, this river is really bad for us because I think he does have a fair few kings in his range. But in saying that, I think he'd, he'd probably bet them a little bit stronger. But um, my idea of this hand was to was to check and let him uh, go wild. So I I can't really see myself folding on this river, even though it's it's not really a good river at all. Um, it's better than a heart, I suppose, but it's up there with one of the worst rivers. And he bets really big against a normal opponent who's not so bluff heavy. I'd be folding this, but I think against this guy, I just can't see myself. I can't fold aces against him. And I do call, and he showed jack 10 for complete air. Didn't even have a heart or anything. Which goes to show he just takes really weird lines. And there, I make the adjustment by, by betting smaller there because I know he's going to 3 bet. And also, because his stack is a lot smaller, it's not a hundred big blinds. Um, I think ten. I bet ten there, which is two point five x, because I can still get stacks in by the river with that size. And right now he's really tilted, and he just opens shoves. Here I could just shove the ace five, and I think it'd be profitable because he'd call with almost any two. But I just fold it because I can get way better spots against this guy, especially in this mood. And he raises to 16. So right now we really need to be adjusting to this. Um, I'd be opening hard, like hardly anything against this guy because he's just so tilted. Um, I'll have to see bet here because it's the only way to win with seven high. But now that he calls, um, and now now that he checks this river, uh, I'll quickly just say um, because he's betting so many rivers here, um, I think I think he. Um, he has a really strong holding here almost all the time. Usually I could go for thin value here because he has so many, you know, pocket fives, pocket threes, pocket uh, fours in his range. But um, here, he, he's usually betting those types of hands. So here I think he has a jack a lot of the time or a strong ace a lot of the time. And um, so I check it back and he does have the trip jacks. So my read there was correct on him. And you can see me noting down the bottom there. Um, I'll get back to that in a second. I'll be C betting this here for value every time. And I'll be checking it down now, hoping to get to showdown. And he bets really small on the river, so he can have a better five. He can have a two. He can have pocket fours. He can have like an ace three type hand, so I'm definitely calling for such a price. And he has a two, so I have the better hand. Um, yeah, but down the bottom there... Um, I have doesn't adjust at all. I'll be folding to the over bet there, obviously. So when I'm checking back these these rivers to him to bet, he just has no idea that I'm doing it. Um, he's not adjusting to it at all. Um, so I'm just going to continually do it, and I'll just continue to show a profit against this guy. A good opponent would adjust by um, by you know never bluffing on the river once I check it back to him because he knows I'm snapping him off every time but this guy's not adjusting at all so I'm just going to continue to do it here uh, kings against the tilt and opponent um, I see a lot of people here um, just fighting because they know his three bidding three bidding range is so wide but that is a, a pretty big mistake in my opinion because a, a tilted opponent, you guys should know yourselves, once you get 4-bet in this type of position, um, or me personally, I'm snapping this with any 2 because I'm tilted, and that's what most players like to do. So I'll be 4-betting this, and I expect to get called by any 2 almost every time. And he snap calls, 
which means he does have basically air all the time or most of the time either air or a hand like you know queen jack which would be a bad flop for that or like 10 jack or 9 jack suited or just like a, a marginal sort of hand but more mainly it will be air than than those marginal hands um, and I'll be uh, I would be C betting there small to induce if he if he hadn't have donked the flop and as you can see his donk flop percentage there is zero percent that's that DF under his HUD um, excuse me and here obviously I've got the best hand every single time he's not going to do this with a straight or two pair so I'll just be calling here I think his range here has a lot of straight draws in it like maybe even ace 10 um, for the double gutter uh, 9 jack sort of 8 9 hands king uh, king 10 even though I've got two of the kings and so many gutters in his range and so many flush draws but I'm always ahead of anything here and the 7 is a real brick it doesn't improve any of his range and he shoves and I snap call him and he shows the 7-3 of hearts which I'm pretty happy against but he spikes the heart and um, I wasn't tilted here at the moment um, because the, those are the types of things that keep fish coming back when they get lucky like that so I kept my head here and I knew that if I kept doing what I was doing um, I'd definitely have this guy within you know within the half hour or so um, Ace Jack suited easy three bet and I get a call from him this is a great flop to see bet it's so dry and it, it hits our, our three betting range so much because we have a lot of kings in our three betting range like king queen ace king and fish think um, you know whenever you see better flop like that that you have it and it can't really hit them too strongly I'm gonna um, defend their queen jack obviously um, here on such a draw heavy board I'm betting to protect my my jack here and betting for value from a 9 or a 6 or anything or a worse jack uh, pretty standard bet there I've got the 10 for the gut shot straight draw as well um, and another thing to to note here is that even though he just you know um, sucked out on me he still seems to be a little bit tilted and I think I recognize this straight away and I, I still was um, really tightening up my range because you know, I knew he was, for some reason, don't know why, but he's still a little bit tilted. And this is a good flop to see bet. It can't really hit his range that hard, but there are a few draws. But once he check raises, we are definitely giving up there with the jack high. Not going to make a move. Um, Ace-8. Good flop for Ace-8. We've got the best hand here pretty much all the time. Um, but now that he pots the the river, um, he can have a straight there, or he can have a six or a four or anything. So I think it's best to just give up there, even though we probably were good. The pot odds weren't good enough. Pocket aces, um, easy three bet. He probably thinks we're a little bit tilted, and it's a great flop for aces. We're always good here. But he folds quicker than I've ever seen a human being fold before which is obvious when I have aces it's gonna happen all the time queen four could be three betting that but uh, to keep that balanced range but uh, like I said I think he's a little bit tilted at the moment um, eight kings suited um, I haven't played back too much of his his three bets here and I'm just gonna say this is a mistake on my behalf you should never be looking to bluff a fish um, especially in four bets just only four bet for value um, so even though I've got a king kicker here um, now that he snap calls this this four bet I think he has a lot of air in his range and this is a great flop for the eight king but I shouldn't have four bet it uh, in the first place because he's just not going to fold to a four bet because he's really stubborn like that and most fish are so I bet half pot a little bit over which I would with pocket aces or even with ace king and he min raises which is really frustrating and here's the second mistake I make in this hand 
Um, I, I try float on him. I try to act like I've got pocket aces, but it, it's just a horrible play by myself. Now that he bets 104, he's setting up for a river shove like always here. So I was thinking about raising him over the top, coming in all over the top, but I can't really do that because I wouldn't be doing that with aces, so I can't really rep that. I'd be just calling and waiting for him. So I'm, I'm repping nothing if I shove there. And if I don't shove, he's probably shoving the river and I have to fold. So that was just a horrible play by myself. And right now, I might be a little bit tilted. I might be a little bit angry at myself, but... Um, I'll still be, hopefully, employing the, the right strategies to beat this guy. Easy C bet with the gutter. Um, I, and I'm just not going to be barreling against this guy because he uh, he just fish just don't fold. So you can see my um, C bet turn percentage there. Uh, CBT is only 16%, which is really low because I I just don't want to be bluffing against this guy. But I do balance that range like you saw before. I check back the um, the two pair on the turn. Um, now that I spiked the 5 here, I think my hand has showdown equity, so I can just fold it, uh, check it down, and I do, and I show the goods. 3 bet ace 9 for value. Don't get a caller. And this was just a little bit of tilt that I called from the 7 8 off suit here. I think about betting there. And I, I spike the 9, which is always good. I should just call, yeah, which I do. Because he has just a lot of, like, ace-queen type of hand in his range here. Maybe, like, queen-10. Uh, just uh, suited queens, like queen-7. Hands like that. Queen-6. So I just call here to let him barrel the, the river. But he doesn't, which makes me think he has a made hand. So I go for value. And he folds really quickly. But now it looks like he's a little bit tilted. That's always a telltale sign when they raise to like 5x, 5 times a big blind. It's usually a sign that they're um, a little bit angry. Jack 10, easy defend. Um, I call here because I can turn an 8, which I end up doing, and I have, um, I'm not sure if there's a term for it, but it's like a nuts over, over an almost nuts hand. Um, it's a, a lot of implied odds because if he has a six and the eight does come, this deep I'm I'm get, I'm going to get stacks in against this guy and it's just going to be massively profitable. And he bets big, and that means he can't have a six. So I'm going to raise really big here because a fish can never ever fold a six here. But he uh, he snap folds. But yeah, I, the the reason behind raising really big there is to to get stacks in. Uh, I'd get a really large bet on the river because he can't fold a six. Uh, defending five queen here. It's probably close, but I, I think it's a defend. Five queen suited. And now that he bets small, he's giving me the odds to to hit my draw. Um, the two comes on the on the uh, turn, and he gives me really good odds to call for my draw again. I know sometimes here I'm drawing dead, and some people don't chase draws if there's a chance you're drawing jet, uh, dead but the pot odds are just too good here to refuse so I call and I end up spiking it and he bets really really big and I snap call I'm never raising here because he can't have a better flush and he can't have a full house and pretty standard stuff but it was a bit of a bit lucky on my behalf that he had the the lower flush but uh, now we should be really tightening up because we know he's going to be tilted pretty hard. Uh, easy C bet there. I just go to check it down. Not a not a great card to to barrel the jack there because he can't have hands like jack ten and jack eight and things like that. And not a good time to to be hero calling because he almost always has a pair. <clears throat> so 
So now that we we know he's he's really tilted, we'll, we'll just be looking to trap him. And um, he should go berserk soon, which he does on this hand. And that's a great flop for me. I'm going to be calling that every time. Um, hopefully trapping him here. I'm going to bet because the only hand that beats me is uh, Jack-10, really. Pocket kings and pocket queens are really unlikely because, you know, the two kings and two queens are uh, are out there. And then I I river the second nuts, and he he leads into me. Uh, here, that means his range. He can have a queen in his range. Uh, he can have, like, ace-queen. But I think his range is more like pocket jacks, pocket tens, and ace-9, nine, 9-10, nine, ten, nine jack type of hands. So I'm obviously raising for value, but it's just a matter of how big. And because I feel he's tilted a little bit, I think I can go for a pretty big value bet. Which I do. That's a massive value bet. And he ends up calling, and I scrape in a, a huge pot. And you can see there, he called with the ace-9 suited. So that's a, a pretty pretty loose call from him, but I wouldn't expect anything less from a fish on tilt. These are these are things um, you should be you should be doing with the game flow adjustments as well. Um, you know, va value betting bigger because you know he's likely to look you up because he's tilted a little bit. Um, here, Ace Queen is an easy four bet for value against the tilted opponent. He's going to call with all of his range, like I said before, with the kings, and he snap calls, which means he has air almost always here. And I check back the Queen Ace. I could value uh, value bet which is a C bet for value and snap off any raise he does because I'm almost always good on this flop but I decide to to let him bluff at it and um, I'm, I'm trapping here I know you guys might think oh trapping he's only got ace high but ace high is almost always good against this guy in this pot in this situation and on the river um, he's repping nothing here except a 3 or a 2 he's not good enough to do this with a flush and he's not good enough to do it with a 9 because he's scared that I have over cards and um yeah so i'm i'm calling this every day of the week i'd be really unlucky if he had a three or a two but i'm good here pretty much all the time and i was and i think he ended up uh not buying back in after that uh, excuse me so that just about wraps up uh video three um I'm sure we got into a few uh, tough situations there, but I hope you guys really um, took note and um, emphasised on the, um, the the adjustments I was making to this particular opponent to make uh, the session as profitable as, as it can be. Always looking for the most optimal adjustment. Um, next week, I will be playing again. I'm not sure what type of opponent it will be yet, but... If you guys tune in, um, I'm sure it'll be pretty entertaining and really helpful to your Heads Up career. Um, if you guys have any suggestions or any questions about this video, just uh, let me know and I will help you guys out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, this has been Chris Edwards for iPokerVIP.com and I'll see you guys next week.